Hi, this is Mike Devlin, the Vice President of Career Development for Century 21 Real Estate Alliance. We're a Century 21 group with offices throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. And this is a quick video on how to get all of your connections straight for using um, MLS listings, MLS matrix, which is the software used by our MLS, Zip Forms, which is the California Association of Realtors form software, RPR, the Realtors Property Resource from the National Association of Realtors. How do you hook all these up together so that they work together and why would you want to even do that? Uh, we'll talk about that. In order to get going, you're going to need your NRDS information in the MLS. NRDS is a number issued by the National Association of Realtors. MLS Connect would need to be activated RPR needs to be activated and zip forms, templates installed and uh, customized. Uh, we're going to cover that. So your NRDS number, did you know that as a member of the National Association of Realtors, you've been issued a number? which you're supposed to, I don't know, memor I don't know, my, I don't know what my number is right off the top of my head. Very few people do. So maybe you're asking yourself, well, how do I find my NRDS number? And one way to do that is to go to the national, uh, go to Google, excuse me, and type in, how do I find my NRDS number? And you're going to see Google has been asked this question before, and they're going to give you already a couple of tips. Um, I would click on the link that says finding your NRDS ID number and you're going to get three choices. And the first choice is your membership card. I didn't know I had a membership card. I don't know where my membership card is. Um, I'm not carrying my NAR membership card, so that won't work for me. Number three is the Realtor Magazine mailing label. Yeah, I see it. I sometimes look through it. I don't have one handy. So no, that's not going to work for me right now. But number two is a NRDS ID lookup tool. That sounds more promising and I've highlighted where you're going to want to click which is available here and you click on it you will then see this slide excuse me this this window and it's going to their recommended setting is to tell them your last name and the email you used when you signed up with the Board of Realtors, the California Association of Realtors, the National Association of Realtors. I got a lot of emails and I'm not entirely sure which one I used when I signed up. So I'm going to opt in for number two, which is last name and real estate license number. I do know those two things. Those two things I do know. So I click on that. I put in my last name. I put in my Department of Real Estate license number and I click submit and there it is in all of its glory is my NRDS number. So yours of course will be different. What you should do at this moment is take your cursor and copy that number into the clipboard of your computer. You're going to need it. You'll see you're going to need it. Now what we want to do is connect the, uh, our NRDS and um, MLS Connect and our, we're going to connect all these things together. So what I'm talking about today is the software used by MLS listings, which is called Matrix, and it's the primary MLS for Santa Clara County, Santa, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, Santa Cruz, Monterey, San Benito, all of those counties. Um, it's used elsewhere, but in my part of the, you know, California, that's where it's used. If you're not using MLS listings, you're not using the matrix software, it'll be different, right? Maybe I'll make a video on that later. But what you want to do is once you've logged into the MLS, you click on the button that says my information. And then what you want to do is go down to where it says edit. And I've highlighted the wrong one. It should be down here where it has the NRDS number, but you click on edit. And by the way, if you haven't done this before, your NRDS number is probably blank. It probably doesn't say anything there. Um, and that's what we're going to choose by clicking on edit. And we're going to get something that looks like this with your NRDS ID is probably not there. And you're going to paste it in from your clipboard where it says NRDS ID. And you're going to click on save. 
And then it's going to show you what it looks like. Click on save. Maybe I've, I've got the same screen twice, but anyhow, click on save. That's how important it is. And then, oh, I know I was here. Um, after you click on save, you want to go over here to the top where, it, see where I've highlighted the pro? If you click on pro, that takes you back to the welcome login page once you've signed in to the MLS. And what we're now going to do is activate and connect RPR, which is the Realtor Property Resource, which is over here, right? the record search. And you click on that. And if, you, if this is the first time you clicked on that, it's going to ask you to create an account. Guess what number they're going to want for you to create an account? Your NRDS number. So they're going to want you to put in your last name, and your NRDS number over in that. That's what's going to pop up when you create an account. When they find you, they're going to ask you to confirm your name. How do you want it to appear on your report? You can change it to a nickname or something like that. Your primary email, enter a password, confirm your password, and then click on next step. Then it's going to ask you to identify the MLS that you're part of. You would choose the state. We're in California. Choose the MLS. Now, the MLS that I'm talking about right now is MLS listings. This would work for all of them, but I'm looking, I'm working on connecting MLS listings to RPR. So you would select your MLS. And that, by the way, is all that you really need to do to connect it. You could log out. Now we want to go to the California Association of Realtors and Zip Forms. So that's car.org. And notice it says that on the screen. If you've already signed in before, you'd click on sign in. If you've never registered, you'd click on register. And guess what number they want if you're going to register for the first time? Your NRDS number. And if you still got it in your clipboard, you paste it in for the third and last time, give them your name, and hit submit. Um, it'll ask you to verify your email and by sending a code. And once you've done that, you can now log in to car.org. I'm assuming at this point that you can log in to car.org. Once you've done that, select Zip Forms. You're going to have to hit the button that says Continue. And what you want to do is to create templates. So let me, let's go in live. So this is what it looks like live. We're going to click on Zip Forms. We're going to go to Validate Membership. Continue. It's valid. I'm feeling validated. And then this is going to pop up. And what we want to do is go to Templates, and we want to go to New. And let's do a buyer template first. We're going to click on new purchase or offer. And uh, I'm going to call it another sample buyer template. Click on residential. And if you only have one template that you use a lot, automatically apply it. Otherwise, you have to remember to apply it. We don't want to select a template right now unless you're going to sort of clone one. We're not, we're not there yet. So that should be maybe what you've got. And you click on Save. And by the way, uh, automatically apply would be an appropriate thing if you're not going to have a lot of templates. Right? You can change the template, but for purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to do that. And it's created this template, which is uh, kind of empty. Right, there's absolutely nothing there. So we're going to add two things. We're going to go up to Add Doc, and we're going to go over here to Add Form, and we're going to add a cover sheet and the residential purchase agreement. Now, there are a lot more forms that we might need. Clicking on the red box up here doesn't actually do much unless you click a couple of times. Here we are. What we want to do is we want to go to the cover sheet. And this is for a buyer template. We scroll down to the third page. See this information here, the selling broker information. This is what we want to fill out, all of this information that's in this box. What's it going to look like? That's a good question. When we're done, 
it's going to look something like this. Right, so that's what mine looks like, selling broker information. I put in the name of the office, the address, office phone number, my name, my phone number, my email, the different BRE numbers for me, the broker, all of that is there. So that's what you're going to do, right? You're going to fill out this information, and once you've done that, you're going to hit save, right? That's pretty much all we want to do is fill out the information in the selling broker. We're going to hit save. And um, just saying, that's all we really need to do for that. Now we're going to go back to the folder, just go back to we're looking at the dashboard. This is the templates is still highlighted. We're now going to click new, new listing. Um, another listing, how about just another listing? Oops. Shouldn't have hit enter. Uh, all right. So that wasn't nice. How about this? So we're going to create a. Does it just take a minute? That's what happens when you move too fast. All right. So we're going to go back to templates. We're going to click on new. Maybe I already, how far did I go? Uh, another sample buyer. I, I didn't do it. So I go to new listing. Uh, another listing. We can pick residential. Again, if you only want only have one real template you use a lot, you have it automatically applied, otherwise not. Click on save. That template will pop up. Uh -huh. Then we go to add doc, add form, cover sheet, and the residential listing agreement. And then click and click and click and click or click to the side and it goes away. Now we go to the cover sheet and we scroll down to the third page. And now we're going to fill out the listing broker information, which by the way, is exactly the same information you put up above. Um, it would look just, you know, exactly like that, only it would be the listing broker information. All right, and then once you've done that, you would save it and fix it out. Save it and exit out. All right. Now, why, 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 why are we doing all this? Well, let me give you an example as to why this is important. So let's say you're going to write an offer. So you go into MLS Matrix and you find the property you wish to write an offer on. Right. So we're going to find something something nice how about this how about a nice little property here 15 million dollars it's a steal at 15 million dollars i think uh, redwood retreat road gilroy and what we want to do is copy that mls number with the ml the whole thing and once we've copied that we're going to go back to zip forms and we want to go to the dashboard now because we want to be we want to be out of templates. We're in the dashboard. And over here on the right, it says create a new transaction. So we click on that. And since this is a buyer, we're going to click on new purchase. And the uh, we're, I'm not I'm going to do that later because I'm lazy, but I'm going to click on residential and I'm going to click on MLS Connect. Now, if everything worked and you gave it enough time so that you put your NRDS number in your MLS information, you should have in this drop down box up here next to MLS name, it should say MLS list. All right, if it doesn't say anything there, then it's not correctly set up. We're going to paste that MLS number without all that space. Um, in the MLS listing ID, I always like to include a property photo, click on find. Let it let it rip. And then I copy this, the address, we don't need the MLS number, use listing, and then I paste that in up here, let it find it, cool, 
select template. All right, so we're writing an offer. I'm going to use my buyer Century 21 template, and I'm going to click on save. And now what's happened is that it's imported all of the information that was in the MLS that I need into the form, including the APN number, it's got the listing agent's information, it may or may not have the seller's information depending upon the import. And when we go over to documents and we click on the purchase sheet, what you're going to see as we scroll through, it's got, now this time it didn't import the seller's information. I wouldn't worry about that too much. But notice it's got the broker's information. It's got my information. Um, it's imported information about the listing. We have to just check the right boxes. All of that is done for us. Right. So that allows us to just import the information rather than retyping it. Let's say that you're doing a listing and you don't have the, it's not in the MLS, right? Because it's a listing and it hasn't been on the MLS, so you can't import the information from the MLS. What you want to do is to go to RPR. And what RPR allows you to do is to find an off-market property, and here's one that it's already been listed, but it's an off-market property. Notice this button right here, zip form transactions. If we click on that and then follow the prompts, what it's going to do is import all of the county records information into zip form so that it's all there for me so I don't have to type it. So if we do it right, the two things we want to accomplish is we want all of our information to be imported into the forms and put in the appropriate place. And we want all of the listing information if we're writing an offer uh, with a buyer, or we want all of the county record information if we're doing a listing agreement, we want it all to be imported. So now all we have to do is put in price and commission and a few other simple things on the listing, uh, put in the price and the loan amount, check the right boxes and things like that. Um, but most of the time, consuming work has already been done. Anyhow, I hope you liked that. It was just a short video. Join me for many videos on how to increase your productivity. I have a coaching program and a mentoring program. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about that, let me know.